Good, good evening, brother and sisters. First, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for your prayer support. So tonight I will be sharing part of my testimony first. This is called, I call part one. Part one relates to the diagnosis of the cancer tumor in my body. So for this testimony, I will just share how the favor of God opened doors for me. Amen. And I will, my problem started, I think, in September last year when I retired from my job. At that time, I have abdominal pain, but it was intermittent. That means uh, it's not off and on. I will have this uh, abdominal pain, especially when it comes to passing motion. So because, because it's intermittent, so I did not pay much attention to it. Because I thought like we all Chinese say, when sometimes you eat too much heaty food and drink not enough water, you will feel, feel your stomach giving you problem and you have problem passing out motion, all this and so But this problem continue. In the early period of this year, in January, February and March, the frequency the frequency of this uh, abdominal pain increases, especially when I need to pass up gas or when I need to need to go to the toilet. I can see it's just like the muscle turning inside, muscle muscle spasm. So still, still I didn't think much of it. So I just tell Grace, I say. You boil barley water with all those uh, Ch Chinese uh, herbs like pergagas, or that. It did help by drinking, every day drinking barley water with these are uh, the Chinese uh, herbs. Uh, it actually reduced the frequency, frequency of the, of this uh, muscle spasm. It was not until in early April, suddenly one day, I have a discharge of blood. This is a liquid blood flowing out, you see. I went to the toilet and just have, have a discharge of blood. That, that made me worry. And this continued for two days. Two days of blood discharge. And the blood discharge caused me dizziness and I actually can't stand up, stand up. I have to lie down because it was too dizzy. So my younger daughter, Alison, said, okay, if that is the case, she took me to the clinic to do a hemoglobin test. And she said, the test came out, said, my hemoglobin level is only 9.3 which is very low actually, because level below 10 is consider, consider low, but 9.3 3 is low. So that night she put me on drip. And after one night of drip, second day, I was okay. So with that, I told Grace, I have to go and see the specialist to do a scope, endoscopy and colonoscopy to see if there is anything wrong with my abdomen. So I arranged to go to HKL, HKL for an appointment. And I have to, to make, uh, wait for two weeks before I can actually meet the gastro, gastro specialist to just fix an appointment to do the endoscopy and colonoscopy. She told me, she said, it's very bad. You may have to wait for three months. So I was thinking, it's okay, have to wait, then I will wait. But then when the appointment card came out that time, it showed that I have to wait five months. My appointment will be on 5th October. So when I come back, I told Grace and the children, I say, 
I can't wait that long. If there is anything wrong, uh, wait for five months, uh, it will be getting very, very worse. So I share with the children. So my eldest daughter tried to chat with her friends in other hospitals to see whether their hospital has a vacant slot much earlier to do an to do the endoscopy and colonoscopy. So one of the friends say, yes, Har- during Hari Raya time, he will be free. He will be avail- available to do, do the colonoscopy. So with that, we arranged to go back to Manjon, to Manjon, where the surgeon there agreed to do the endoscopy and colonoscopy for me. So I managed to have the, these are the endoscopy and colonoscopy done. But then after the colonoscopy come out, he, he talked to, to us, he said it's bad. It's bad because there is a big ulcer in the large, large intestine and it was bleeding. So he showed us the video, video of the colonoscopy. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, there was a big ulcer and it was still bleeding. You see. So he said, based on his experience, this is not a good sign. So he said, it's best that you immediately go and do a CT scan, CT scan to see whether the cancer cell has spread. So he arranged with his friend in the private hospital there. So two days later, we went to do a CT scan. So from the CT scan there, it showed that it has not spread. That there is no sign to say it has spread to any other organs. So after that, the, the doctor who arranged for the CD scan said, why not you go and see this so-and-so in this uh, uh, private hospital? He said he is an expert on this, uh, the coronal rectal surgery. That means to say the surgery to remove part of the intestine. So I said, that is my classmate. Then he said, you better go and see him. So I come back to KL call out my friend made appointment to see him. So when I went to see him, he looked, he looked at the video, he said, it's bad. You need to get it operated. So we were discussing on the cost. He said for that cost, for, in, for his hospital, that will cost between 40 and 50,000. But because I am a bypass patient, he said, because there may, there may be complication, the cost can increase a lot. So he asked me whether I have medical, uh, medical insurance. I said, no, for my medical treatment, I use my eldest daughter government benefit where it's free. So he said, if that is the case, he said, I recommend you go to Salaya Hospital. Salaya Hospital is a colorectal referral hospital from all over the country. He said there is a very good surgeon there, surgeon there. So he gave me the name of that surgeon. So then at the same time, he said, I allocate a date for you in my, in my surgery schedule. So he said, you go and see Salaya Hospital. If you think you need to come back to me, then you come back. If not, then you do the operation in Salaya Hospital. So he gave us the name. So, so my eldest daughter was saying he has no, she has no contact in Salaya Hospital or that you see. So she just chat, chat around with her friend to say whether any, any one of the friend, doctor's friend, 
know this surgeon or not. So somehow, one of the colleagues say, my husband is working in that hospital as a surgeon. He said, I will chat with the husband. So through him, we managed to fix out an appointment with the surgeon uh, in Salayan to do an assessment. So from here, so on the day of the appointment, we went there, we meet this surgeon, not the surgeon, his subordinate, because they always work as a team, you see. So the surgeon that my friend recommended, his assistant, was the one who who meet us. And he also looked at it, at the video and the CT scan. So he said, it's better to have it cut, uh, to, to have a surgery to remove that part of the intestine. So he explained to me, explained to me, he said, the procedure that they use. In Salayan Hospital, they were use uh, this uh, laparoscopic procedure. That means it will not be an open cut to remove, but they will punch four holes. Three holes is a small hole, but one big hole to take out, take out the intestine that need to be cut. So, so we ask, what is the advantage? Between this uh, laparoscopy and open car, he said, laparoscopy, if everything okay, you can be discharged after four to five days if there is no complication. Whereas, if it is uh, the open car, you will need to stay in the hospital much longer. My friend at the private hospital say he will be using the open car and that will require at least 10 days stay in the hospital, you see. So the surgeon in Salayan said, with this, your healing lap laparoscopic procedure, your healing will be very, very fast. Then after explaining all the, all the risks, all that to us and the procedure that he will use, then he looked at his calendar, he said, I can only fix you in on 13 June. So is it too long? Because my friend has already allocated 24th May for me, you see. So that means to say there is a period of around three weeks. So in my heart, I ask him, I say, if it is delayed by this period, will the thing spread? But he said, Normally, it won't spread that fast within that period, you see. Within that period. So I said, okay, tentatively, I agree on the 13th of June. So we fix the date. Then we come back, then we, we decide to say whether to go to the private hospital or to go to this. The advantage is private hospital, I can have it done. The surgery can be done three weeks, at least three weeks earlier. But then the cost will be open end. The cost will be open end because as a bypass patient, we do, we do not know what type of complication may arise, you see. But if at the Salayan there, at least uh, the cost is controlled because I will be, I will be using using my eldest daughter medical uh, government servant benefit. So we also look at at the private hospital. It will be open surgery. That will be ten days. Whereas here, if everything go okay, after five days, I will be able to to be discharged. So this. This side, then we have to really consider time factor, cost factor, and the recovery factor. So I ask the prayer leaders to say, please pray for me, for the Holy Spirit to guide me to make the right decision. The right decision. 
So Pastor Eric come back to say, the impression he has is that I should go for Selayang Hospital. Sister Elaine also come back to say, the impression she gets is I should go to Selayang Hospital. So we make the I made the decision to say, okay, if that is the case, we choose to go to Selayang Hospital. So I inform my friend to say, say. I will take the operation in Salaya. So the slot that he allocated for me, he, he can give it to his other, other patient. So from here, you see how, door, how God opened doors, you see. Even, even though HKL say five months, but God opened a door to say in Manjong, I, I can have it done during the Hari Raya period. And then my friends in the private hospital, he recommend, he recommend this surgeon in Salayan. He say it's good so you can go in, see him to see whether he can do the operation. And yet we do not know anything. That time I did not know that Salayan Hospital is a referral hospital for colorectal, colorectal uh, surgery. So here you see, step by step, God favor opened the door for us to say, in the end, we are able to go to, to that surgeon and his team. And, and God opened the door and the surgeon, surgeon and his assistant was such a nice team that they treat treat us as friends, explaining in detail what are the risks involved, that, what are the possible complications that may arise. Amen. So from here, I can see that God's favor was upon me and He was guiding, guiding us step by step. And the other thing is, many us, are you worried of your disease? Are you scared? But praise God. The Bible say, Jesus say, the peace I give, the world cannot give. Amen. And in Philippians say, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and guard my, your mind. So during this period, there was no fear in me. There was only this peace and quiet assurance that God will guide me through you. See. So I was not affected by negative comment. I was not affected by other people's worry. But I continue to trust in my God that He will lead me through. So Amen. this is just the first part of my testimony of how God opened the door to lead me to have an appointment for an operation. Next Wednesday, I will share the second part on the, on the operation itself and Amen. what I experienced during the, during the operation and during the stay in the hospital.